A warning from history. The Carrington event was not unique. On September 1st, 1859, the most ferocious solar storm in recorded history, apparently, engulfed our planet. And it was called the Carrington event, named after British scientist Richard Carrington, who witnessed the instigating solar flare sparked auroras from Cuba to Hawaii and set fire to telegraph stations and wrote itself into history books as the biggest solar storm ever. But sometimes what you read in history books is wrong. And in fact, the Carrington event was not unique, says Hisashi Hayakawa of Japan's Nagoya University, whose recent study of solar storms has uncovered other events in recent memory of comparable intensity. While the Carrington event has long been considered a once-in-a-century catastrophe, new historical observations warn us that this may be something that occurs much more frequently. And what we're looking at here is a drawing of the Carrington sunspot by Richard Carrington on September 1st of 1859. And next to it is an even bigger sunspot from 1770 that we're about to get to. Now, to generations of space weather forecasters who learned in school that the Carrington event was one of a kind, these are unsettling thoughts. Modern technology now is far more vulnerable to solar storms than back in the 19th century when they had telegraphs. Think about GPS, the internet, the transcontinental power grids that can carry geomagnetic storm surges from coast to coast in a matter of minutes. A modern day Carrington event could cause widespread power outages along with disruptions to navigation, air travel, banking, and all forms of digital communication. Now, many previous studies of solar superstorms leaned heavily onto Western Hemisphere accounts, omitting data from the Eastern Hemisphere. And why this is the case is anyone's guess. But this skewed perceptions of the Carrington event, highlighting its importance while causing other superstorms to be overlooked, is anyone's guess. In fact, a good example is the great superstorm of mid-September of 1770, when extremely bright red auroras blanketed Japan and even parts of China. Captain Cook himself saw the display from near Timor Island. And that's south of Indonesia, near the equator. Hayakawa and colleagues recently found drawings of the instigating sunspot, and it's twice the size of the Carrington sunspot group. And we did just show you that here. This is the 1770 spot, Carrington spot, not to scale. And this is a painting of that auroral display back in 1770. So we have paintings, we have diary entries, and other newfound records, especially from China, that depict some of the lowest latitude auroras ever that spread over a period of nine days, which was actually longer than the Carrington event. And according to the new team, they conclude that the 1770 magnetic storm, which is depicted here in this painting, was not only comparable to the Carrington event, at least in terms of auroral visibility. Moreover, the duration of the storm activity was much longer than usual, which is bad news because if we were to have a solar storm for nine days of this magnitude, it would mean complete destruction of almost all of the grid and all electronic sensitive ones on Earth. Now, the team also found 
that superstorms in February 1872 and May of 1921 were also comparable to the Carrington event. So let me get this straight. We've got four events, the magnitude of the Carrington event since 1770. That's way more frequent than every hundred years. And these events in 1872 and May of 1921 were similar magnetic amplitudes with widespread auroras. Two more storms are nipping on Carrington's heels. We've got the Quebec blackout of March 13th, 1989. Where is that one? Right there. And the unnamed storm on September 25th, 1909, where only a factor of approximately two less intense. So the 89 storm, the 1909 storm were less intense, as well as the 1972 solar flare versus AT&T. Yes, did you know? This is right after I was born, so I don't know. That a major solar flare erupted on August 4th, 1972, and it knocked out long-distance phone communications across some states, including Illinois. And that event, in fact, caused AT&T to redesign its power system for transatlantic cables. So there is some progress. But contextualizing the Carrington event has become a busy niche in space weather research. One team left by Jeff Love of the USGS recently confirmed the near equality of Carrington to the May 1921 superstorm. And Hayakawa's team have just unearthed new records of extreme auroras in South America as well. This now puts five or six, maybe even seven Carrington-like events happening on Earth in the last 250 years. That means events like the Carrington event may happen every 40 years or so. And the last big event was in 89. And that means we're due any time now. In fact... We are well overdue for another Carrington event. Maybe, in fact, we might have just missed one. In fact, in July 2012, NASA and the European spacecraft watched an extreme solar storm erupt from the sun and narrowly miss Earth. If it had hit, we would still be picking up the pieces today according to Daniel Baker of the University of Colorado at NOAA's Space Weather Workshop. It might have been stronger than the Carrington event itself, based on what we witnessed. And so, what does that leave us now? Well, we have the 1989 major power failure from geomagnetic storms that happened in Quebec, In fact, that powerful solar flare provoked a geomagnetic storm which set off a major March 13th power blackout in Canada that left 6 million people without electricity for nine hours. Now, had it been a slightly larger and longer, that could have been 600 million people for nine days. Power outages over a week have not occurred on Earth in recent memory. And when they do, the effects will be severe. The majority of the population is incompetent, cannot provide for themselves. We are no longer agrarian. We do not grow our own food. Most people don't have the skill sets to hunt or fish or barter or even have anything to barter. So that is the dilemma. When the sun shoots out the next powerful solar flare, a catastrophe will unfold. And it's never happened in the modern world, and how it unfolds is anyone's guess. There will be power outages. There will be looting. There may even be starvation, cholera, disease. 
It depends on how powerful the storm is. But what we want to get across tonight is that new evidence is coming out that the Carrington event is not unique. In fact, there have been seven similar events, five equal to the Carrington event, in the last 250 years, and that's quite significant. That means the next boom is coming. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Are you prepared? And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance during the next superstorm and Carrington-like event. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Unique.